Today at Speedy's Garage, I'm going to talk about a little project I'm working on to more accurately read boost on the supercharged Challenger. The car has a two bar map sensor installed, which can read up to about 14 and a half pounds of boost. On a six speed Challenger, uh, as it approaches that maximum limit, the car actually goes into like a, a rev limiter type scenario where it closes the throttle body, shuts off the timing, and uh, you get no throttle response. To solve that, <clears throat> I put a map clamp on the car which clamps the voltage at a specified amount and won't let the car see more than 14.4 to 14.5 PSI. The side effect of that is in my data logs, I can't read the actual boost that is being produced. To solve the problem, I picked up a GM 3 bar map sensor that I'm going to wire up separately and feed into my Trinity data logger. One bar of pressure is 14.503 PSI. That means that this sensor can read up to 43.509, which is 3 times 14.503 uh, pounds per square inch of pressure. 43.509. Now a lot of people say, oh, well then it can read 43.5 pounds of boost. And that would be incorrect. The reason is because there's air pressure pushing down on us all the time. And that's atmosphere. One atmosphere is about equal to 14.696 PSI, but based on your, um, that's at sea level, but based on your altitude where you live and air pressure in the air, etc., it ends up being about 14.2 to 14.5 according to the data logs that I have, at least on my car in my area. <clears throat> and I live close to sea level. So that means on this three bar map sensor, the first 14.5 PSI is taken up. So zero, is anything over one atmosphere. So the first bar that I can actually get boost from would be bar number two, if we were going to look at it graphically. And bar two, or two bar, would read up to 14.503. And I have a two bar map sensor in the car, so that's the limit that I'm ever going to see, plus a map clamp, which means it'll never go above that. And then you got another bar you can use. So you had another 14.503 for the third bar in the reading, and it can go up to 29.006 PSI. So that means a three bar map sensor like this will read up to 29 pounds of boost, give or take a little, even though the total amount of pressure it can read is 43.509. I make a point of saying this because a lot of people forget that atmosphere actually does have a pressure associated with it. Now with the boring math stuff out of the way, we can talk about the sensor and how easy it is to hook up. I uh, got this one off eBay, very cheap, very easy to hook up. It's only three wires. Um, on this particular one, this will be ground. This will be five volt supply. They are five volt sensors, so you will need a five volt supply. This is the output that will go to the Trinity. And uh, I'll, I'll use analog input two on the little stereo jack cable that I've wired up. And then I will uh, configure the Trinity to read boost from this. I'm use a couple extra pieces of wire. Obviously, I'm going to match up the wire colors. And I'll need just a little bit of a uh, quarter inch vacuum line to make the connection to the supercharger and to the map sensor. I'm also going to use some heat shrink, obviously my wire stripper tool, some solder, uh, cordless soldering iron, and to keep it all factory looking, since these are just, um, these are going to run pretty close uh, inside the engine bay. So the one that's going to go to ground will run just to the passenger side head. Uh, the one for the 5 volt supply, I'm going to tie into my fuel pressure sensor that is also 5 volt. Uh, so that'll be easy. And this one, the, the output will have to run all the way to the interior of the car uh, to connect to the Trinity. Uh, since there's not very much distance between the, the ground and the 5 volt supply, um, those will run together. The orange rock wire, I'm going to put some braided sheath on just to hide it, protect it, and again go for that factory look. I attached a ring terminal to the ground line and there's where I attach the ground to the back side of the passenger side head uh, to the same ground stud that the factory um, fuel injection harness grounds to. And there's the harness and the connector. And I just ran it right along the back of the engine with the rest of the wiring that I've had in the car. And the wires enter the car through the same grommet I've used for all my other wiring. 
uh, right next to the brake master cylinder. And there's where the harness enters the cabin of the vehicle. And I just had it follow along with the other wiring I have in the car. It's this braided one. And it comes up and terminates here. And the uh, yellow wire goes to a 12 volt to 5 volt regulator that I have in the car from Aeroforce. And it's that piece right there. So that signal or that uh, sensor requires a 5 volt um, supply. And then the orange wire goes to the analog input 2 of the Trinity. And of course, I soldered everything as usual. So I mounted the map sensor with zip ties on this thick harness that runs behind the engine. And now we just need to make up a little vacuum line to go from the input to the blower's output on the back. <clears throat> and I'm gonna tee it so that I can run my digital boost gauge as well as my mechanical, uh, just so I can compare them and so that I can also see boost when I'm not running the, uh, running the Trinity. And to hook that up, I'm gonna use about 10, 12 inches of uh, quarter inch vacuum hose, a small nylon tee, and this one is 3 16 by 3 16 by 3 16 a couple of zip ties and some snips. And there's the finished product. You can see we've got our mechanical boost gauge teed in, and we got our map sensor hooked up. So now we just need to program the Trinity to understand the input from the sensor. To determine what range this sensor was going to have with the Trinity, I went online and looked up the specs of the GM 3-bar map sensor, and it has a minimum value voltage of 0 0.02 and a maximum of 4.94. It has a minimum pressure value of minus 1 bar and a maximum of 3 bar. So the range would be minus 14.503 PSI to 29 PSI. Remember, you're giving up your first bar because you're under atmospheric pressure like I spoke of earlier. So for a sanity check, I just plotted this out in Microsoft Excel real quick and then cross-checked it against some uh, sources on the internet. None of this is brand new. These three bar map sensors have been being used in hot rods for a very long time. Everything from imports to um, custom built machines using mega squirt and things like that. Next, I hooked up a pressure gauge to my air compressor and I set this to 29 PSI since that's the maximum limit um, that that sensor is capable of seeing. Actually, to tell you the truth, I set it to 30 PSI to make sure I went one over. Um, I then looked at the voltage on the Trinity that was being output by the sensor. You can look at analog two volts on the Trinity and it was actually 4.90 volts. So that means I've got a little bit of line loss and I want this to be as accurate as possible because uh, even a half a PSI boost, um, I wanna know about that. So then I had to do a little quick math um, the standard setup on the Trinity is zero to five volts. You can't rescale that sensor that I know of. So start off at zero volts. It's 14.503 PSI negative side. So that would be the lower bound. At five volts, it's expecting 29 PSI. However, I'm not actually getting five volts. I'm getting 4.90. So we need to convert that. The factory sensor range is 0 0.02 to 4.94 like I spoke of before. At 29 PSI, I got 4.90 volts displayed on the Trinity. The three bar range on this sensor, the total range is 43.511 PSI. And you just get that by Googling three bar to PSI online and you'll get that value. Now we take 43.5, which is our value here, divide it by our new voltage that we got when we put the 29 PSI to the sensor, and it gives us 8.878 PSI per volt. Now we multiply that times 5 volts to get it in the range that Trinity is expecting and that gives us 44.38 PSI. Now we take the 44.38, we subtract off that first bar that we're going to lose because it's going to be negative. Our new upper bound is 29.88. So in my Trinity right now I set it up to 14.503 negative for the lower bound. 29.88 for the upper. Next, you're going to go into your Trinity. Go to Options. Analog Input Configuration. Add a new parameter. You can 
call it, I've called mine boost, so you can call it whatever you want. Um, I'm gonna call this one test because I've already got a boost one. I'm just gonna show you how to do this. Pick channel two, because that's the one I wired it to. Units, we're gonna do PSI. Lower bound, this is where we're going to put in the negative 14.503. That is one bar negative. Upper bound was what we said before 29.88. Continue. Now, you can go back and now you've got that parameter selected or created. You can add it to a gauge layout. I've already done that. So I'm gonna pick Mike at OST. And you can see there's my boost PID reading vacuum. Now you'll notice on my boost gauge, it's reading 20 inches of mercury. That's how vacuum is measured. But on the Trinity, we're reading minus 8.65 psi so keep in mind there is a conversion factor there 20 inches of vacuum is equal to about minus 9 psi so we know it's working correctly and when we give it some gas you see we made a couple of pounds of boost there so i can get them both in the shot so we know it's working correctly So that's all there is to it. It's a pretty easy install and it's easy to set up on the Trinity. Um, if you're running more than 14 and a half pounds of boost, it's a pretty good idea to add a GM three bar map sensor to the car so that your logs are accurate for your tuner. If you'd like some more project information, visit my website, www.speedysgarage.net.